Hello everyone, I'm Monsignor Jamie and welcome to a new episode of Breaking Bread, where I bring together life's most important ingredients, family, faith, friends, and of course, food. Today we have with us a starving actor, so maybe I'll feed him a little bit, Ignacia Matenia. He was three years old when he came from this country from Poland. He is an actor, he starred in Break Every Chain, it's an award-winning film. He was on Law and Order, and he's been on many other television programs. So I'm happy to have him today on our show. Today he's gonna to come on and talk to us about his career. So don't go away. Hey, my name is Ignacio Matinia. I'm an actor, you may have seen me on Law & Order SVU, Break Every Chain, or My Nightmare Landlord on Lifetime Television. So you guys bring me on the show. I want to learn how to cook something new, but you guys are making me cook something that I have all the time. Stuffed cabbage. I think it's called gawompi. You couldn't teach me how to make something Italian, some pasta, maybe a Sunday sauce, whatever. I'll be the judge of how good it really is. Welcome back to Breaking Bread, and we have with us a starving actor. I keep saying that because he's hungry today. Ignacio Matenia. Ignacio. Nothing like the smell of hot, steamy cabbage to uh, no. quench that existential hunger. Oh, all right. And you know about Polish food, right? Of course, I'm Polish. I was born in Poland. My parents well, how did you settle food. in Bensonhurst? That's an Italian name. Of all the places, right? Well, my family moved to the United States when I was three. We lived in Nashville, Tennessee. We lived in Pensacola, Florida. We lived in Orlando, Florida. And then we moved to Brooklyn. My okay. dad had a job. He was chasing work. And of course, we settled on Cropsey and 24th Avenue. Okay. Cropsey and 24th, yeah. right? In the 80, heart of uh, in, the, in the heart of Benson. The Italians, yeah, right? Yeah, 80. Not, not uh, Greenpoint, Brooklyn. No, no, no. Polish people that's, are. that's where we, <laughs> Greenpoint wasn't really a great neighborhood back then. I know, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So we went to Bensonhurst. That's where everybody was working. That's right. where everybody was making money. That's where I went to school. That's where I Where'd grew you up. go to school? I went to St. Athanasius. Well, I think you, I've heard think of that place. Of yeah, right, they right. had that past there. Uh, uh, what's his name? Monsignor. Yeah, Chisato? he's very low key. I, no, I he, can't remember his he, name. He, he really doesn't put himself out there at all. <laughs> so you went to school there. How yes, did, did you uh, get involved in acting? So oddly enough, I did my first school play that I got picked out of the hat to star in. At St. A's? At St. A's. My teacher, Miss Lori Young, picked me out of the hat to play Casey in the play Casey at Bat. And I think that was the first time I experienced what stardom was. You know, okay. I fell in love with it, and it was one of those things that I wasn't quite self-aware of. It was one of those things that I guess I learned as I got older and I felt more comfortable in my skin, and I wasn't really worried about other people's point of views, and I dived into it full that's force, great. you know? And you've been working on some and great I, films. Yeah, and, I've been uh, very blessed. Show, Law and Order, I mean, that's... That was uh, an incredible experience. That's okay. one of the TV shows you grew up watching in New sure. York, you know? And How I, many episodes were you on? In so I guest starred in one episode of the newest season, season 23, episode okay. 12. And uh, I'm not going to tell you whether or not I played the good guy or the bad guy. Okay. Now, what about the uh, the, the movie? The movie Break, Break Every, Every Chain. Chain. So that was a movie we filmed in the height of COVID. Actually, okay. it's based off a true story off the book, based on Officer Jonathan Hickory's life. He was a first responder police officer who dealt with PTSD, alcoholism, and depression. And it's the story of his journey finding God and coming to terms with his problems and saving his family, his marriage, and, and everything wow. else. And I know that, you know, you, you go to church. I do. I mean, your faith is very important to you. This I is mean, very true. In the Polish tradition, I mean, faith, Poland is one of the most Catholic countries in the world. Mm -hmm. And I know that that has had an impact on your life right. and your career and everything that you do. Absolutely. Because I mean, it's all grounded in faith. You got to have those values. I mean, Hollywood is a very, it's the Wild West. You know, yes. you have people sacrificing their morals, their integrity, what makes them themselves, you right. know, and I'm trying to hold on to my values, my conviction, and I do that by staying grounded in my faith right. and it's great to keep in contact with the parish being around people yeah. like yourself Thank Monsignor you. what was his name the one Casado Casado that one <laughs> him yeah no it's, it's that's it's, great yeah it's, and, it's what keeps me grounded and we also put you to work I know I you mean do, the, you do a lot of performances for us I and do, the churches you, you, and uh, you guys are kind enough to bring yeah, me around you yeah. know what I mean and I mean you guys have been working me since I was what 12 years old I was an altar boy at St. A's so that's free great. labor okay you know you ever think of becoming a priest I mean uh, you know, it's kind of like a little See, bit of acting. <laughs> a little bit of acting. It's a lot. You need, you need a little showmanship. It's a, it's a lot of bit of acting, but I don't, I don't know if I could, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I could get away from the women, man. I know that's a tough they, one. They, they you, pull me in, and they. Well, I, you can do the work, God's work, whether you get married, you have a family. Very true. And sometimes you can do more 
on the outside than you can do. Well, that's what it is. You know, I'm trying to tell stories with conviction, stories that have meaning and purpose so that we can pass along a message, maybe teach somebody a lesson, maybe give someone hope or faith where it was lacking. Right. Maybe give them a little bit of a, an incentive to go right. search for a greater meaning. You know what I mean? That's great. That's great. Now, you talk about your roots, uh, your Polish background. You have a lot of Polish food at home? We do. <laughs> so my mother loves cooking. It's one of my father's favorite meals. Okay. That and liver, which I absolutely despise. So okay. please never bring me on the show right. and make me cook liver. I won't eat it. Pierogies? The pierogies are amazing. <laughs> There's a bunch of different kinds. My favorite are, um, they're called the Ruskie pierogi, which is Russian pierogies. They're pierogies with potatoes, cheese, and sauteed onions on top. Okay. It's the best. We're not cooking that today. No, 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 no. Right. no. Maybe, maybe I, I tell you, I looked up the recipe. I stuck to something a little easier, stuffed cabbage. It's a little easier, right? <laughs> but you know what I love? We used to have a Polish cook when I first was ordained at St. Patrick's in Bay Ridge. I'm sorry to hear that. No, she was excellent. Was she? Excellent. And the best thing that she did make all these dishes, but the pomczki, the jelly donuts. Oh, she pomczki, pomczki, pomczki. She yeah. used to make them fresh. Oh, they were unbelievable. That's why I was going to put on a little weight. Well, you're looking all right now. <laughs> Polish sweets are impact that. Yeah. They're delicious. So I prepared this Polish meal for you, but maybe you can give me a few pointers while I'm Of course, preparing. absolutely. Well, I'm curious, what kind of meats did we start well, we off with? We have beef and pork. We're going to take a break first. Okay. We'll be right back. We'll right. prepare this and we'll hear a little more about your career. Sounds good. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and I'm going to feed this starving actor some good food. None of that fast food that all these <laughs> actors eat. We'll be back to hear a little bit more about his career and his Polish roots. Don't go away. Polish food is great. There's some dishes that I love, pierogies, kielbasa. I love stuffed peppers. But when I came here, I, you know, the first thing you're introduced to after having this food, that's, it, it's meant to feed your hunger. That's it. And then coming here and experiencing fast food was crazy. I've never had a sandwich with so much flavor enter my body ever. Welcome back to Breaking Bread with actor Ignacia Matina. He is a performing actor. He's been in many shows, movies, and he's here today. And I'm going to make him a good Polish dish because he eats too many fast food items. Or nothing at all. <laughs> so I'm making here something I'm sure you've had many times. Right. Stuffed cabbage. Stuffed so cabbage. what I have here is onion and garlic. That's correct. You have to correct me if I'm doing anything wrong. You're right. nailing it right. Saute the onion and garlic with some olive oil. Yep. Okay, I have my cabbage right here. We have our beef. Okay. Our rice. We have our beef. I mix it with a little pork. pork of course. I we'll, put, well, what we usually do is beef, pork, and veal, but I'll let okay, it Okay, like making today. meatballs. Exactly. Okay, but I, exactly. I didn't put any veal in here. That's we fine. have, I made some cooked rice. Cool. Okay, and of course we just got a head of cabbage. You boiled the cabbage. Just boiled it and you just peeled off the leaves. You boil for about 20, 25 right. minutes. Yep. And the leaves just in. fall right so off. So now we have here our meat, put in the egg. Well, the egg, actually what we do is once we saute the onions and the garlic, then we, we put add that the in. beef Okay, in. we'll right. put this we in right now. Gotcha. Okay. Now we're gonna mix the onions, the garlic, and the meat together and we're gonna throw it right back okay. on the Okay, I pan. put a glove on because, you know, I don't wanna get my hands That's all right, in. I'll let you do all the dirty all right. work, okay? Uh, I'll do the I'm dirty I'm an actor, work. I don't touch anything. <laughs> We'll put this right over here. Great. Get that out of the way. Okay. Okay, mix this together. That's right. Now we'll throw in some salt and pepper. Some salt, pepper, maybe throw some it red in. flakes. Just throw it in. Okay, I'm going to put you to work. Pepper. This isn't in my contract. <laughs> a little red pepper. Now I like to put a little parsley in just for color. You like it spicy? Yes. All a right, little spicy. A little more. I like to try something different. What's that? This is 
lemon zest. Ah. Throw that in there. The oh, biggest fit thing is, don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. You know, this is the kitchen. It's pretty zesty. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now I mix so this what we together. Do is, yeah, we mix that together, then we cook it. You can cook it ahead of time, but if right. we bake it a little longer, you want to make it sure, yeah. yeah, you can bake it as Throw well. Throw in the rice. Okay. I've had about a cup of rice. Raw rice makes two cups. Yeah, keep that mixing that. We'll mix the, this together. We'll throw the egg in there. Yeah. And if it doesn't clump up, we could add another okay. egg. But I think one should be fine. Yeah. Throw that egg in there to bind it all together. Yep. So we have in here some beef and pork. And of course, as Ignacio said, we could put some veal. We have our cooked rice. And we have our sauteed onion and garlic with some olive oil. I promise some, it tastes a lot better than yeah. pork. Salt and pepper and a little lemon zest. That's my little trick. Okay. And what we do is basically just mix this all together. That's right. And we have our cabbage. And we roll it up. We just roll it up. Now I'll take this, throw that away. Let's get our hands dirty. Right. I'm gonna put some in and you can roll them for me. Help Sounds me. good. Roll it up. Amazing. Fold in the side so that it doesn't come out. And just fill these up. Like little burritos. Yes, exactly. Polish burrito, as we call them. It's very easy. Now, these you can prepare ahead of time, too. That's what makes it so great. So I put a little tomato sauce that I already prepared. And you can just place those in the pan. And you know what you're doing. I do. It's not my so food. why do you eat so much fast it's food? Not. Because I don't have time. Time. I, I don't have time. Know. Actually, I don't really eat fast food. I love fast you, food. Okay, okay. But whether or not I actually fall into that indulgement is another okay. thing. Now, tell me, how did you get into acting? So... I was going to college at SUNY Albany for pre-med, right? Pre-med, okay. Everyone in my family is in medicine, and so I guess just by tradition, I was indoctrinated into believing that's what I was supposed to do. Right. When I got to college, I kind of developed a mind of my own. I got my own personality, found what was me, so to say, you know? and. I realized that medicine wasn't for me, that there's this thing out there that I want to explore that I haven't had the opportunity to explore. And I know if right. I finish school and I go to med school and, and I pursue that life, I will never have the chance to do that. And so I took the time to really decide that this wasn't for me. I left school. Well, first, I transferred to St. Joseph's College to come back closer to New York. I worked with a mentor because I was taking acting classes in between all of that. Okay. And the guy that I was working with, his name was Sedley Bloomfield, very talented actor. He looked at me and he said, you know, if you have a plan B, you're setting plan A up to fail. He goes, you seem like the kind of person who's talented, who has a gift. And I didn't, I've never known that. You know, when someone tells you you've got a gift, you kind of brush it off. It's right. like, what are, what are you talking about? But I realized it and I loved what I was doing. When you're doing something, if you're not happy, you of course. Go with it. Well, that's one of the hardest things to do, right? Following your hunt or following society or what everybody tells you to do. But I just want to show you that in case the stem is a little too thick, right. all you do cut is it off. just break it Rip right, it right off. off. And if the, the cabbage falls apart, you can put two pieces together. And once you cook them, it'll all blend together. Yeah, a little extra meat. Yeah. And then some rice balls. Oh, meatballs. Exactly. Polish meatballs. Polish meatballs. <laughs> and then what we do? Throw it in the oven. Yep. You take a little sauce, just a little bit on top. Spray it right on top. And you bake this. Now, just a little hint. Some people do this in Italian with stuffed peppers. Same, well, see, same ingredients. Here's the thing, when I was a kid, I hated cabbage. Okay. So my mother used to make them for me in peppers. Right, right, Everybody exactly. else had cabbage, I had the peppers. Yes. Because I had all my Italian friends talking in my ear. Especially you're an actor, right? I am. And you know, you gotta be careful because you know, cabbage is very gassy. That would mean you're telling me. You, and, know, and you don't you wanna be on the set. And you picked this to bring <laughs> me on the show, right? <laughs> we'll put this in the oven. Since the meat is raw, I right. mean, I know in the Polish tradition you, you may cook have it cooked first. the meat. Yeah, yeah. How long are you putting it in for? I'm gonna put it in about 35, 40 minutes at 350. Okay. Okay, Sounds we'll like let this cook. You have any relatives in Poland? I know you were My born outside family. of Krakow. Yeah, in a town called Busko Zdroj. My whole family What's was that? in Poland. Busko Zdroj. And where, how far? I'm to pronounce that. forget it. How far is that? It's about 45 minutes outside of Krakow. It's a medicinal town where people go to rejuvenate. There's a lot of wellness centers, spas, hospitals there. So a lot of people with ailments travel to that town. My grandfather was a surgeon. He's very well known in the area. And so that's where the whole medicinal thing came okay. out. But that's where I was born. My parents moved to Krakow. That's where my mother's from. And then we decided to move to the United States. 
Do you ever go back? I always go back. My entire family's there. You know, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my grandparents. God rest his soul, my grandmother just passed away, so my grandfather came to stay with us here in New York. And he hates it. Oh, he misses yeah. Poland. He yeah. loves Poland so much. The only thing he likes is the family. You know what I mean? I'm sure, uh, you know, John Paul II in his very... Well, he was the important. best pope. And, and no, best pope ever, right? That's the that's one thing we're so proud of. He was the best. You guys really have George was. Washington in America. We yeah. got John Paul II. Exactly. He's but not just in Poland, the whole world. The whole world, the whole yeah. church. You know, the oddly church. enough, he yeah. left his mark. Okay. We're going to take a break. Sure. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We're going to taste this stuffed cabbage, and Ignacio will tell us a little bit more about his future. Don't go away. Welcome back to Breaking Bread with actor Ignacio Martina. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Right, now we're gonna try this uh, stuffed cabbage. What do you call it? Gawompi. 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 <laughs> That's right. Let's take this out. The oven's in here about 35, 40 minutes. Wow, wow look at this. That smells delicious. That looks really good. So tell me, Ignacio, what is your future? What does it have in store for you? What, what do you plan on doing? There's a lot of things I got to work on. I mean, I want to work on my perseverance, my tenacity. This business is very unpredictable. I know. So if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. Right. I'm hoping to get into directing, writing, and producing my own content, telling stories with conviction because I feel like that's lacking today in Hollywood. Helping to convey a message that ultimately uplifts and makes people better people. Okay. I know in acting, like many other professions, but I think more so in acting, you have to really be persistent. And yeah. have a lot of patience because we know there's a hundred auditions for everyone. Yeah, but most importantly, you have to have faith. Faith. That's exactly. the most important and thing. And that's what I was getting to that you know, you have to put your trust in God, have patience. A lot of times we don't have patience. Well, that's the hardest thing. And we thing want to have. things tomorrow, yeah. today, yesterday. And you know, if you're really convicted about something and you really know that this is what you want, go with it and never give up. Absolutely. Because God will get you through. From your lips to God's ears. I pray so. <laughs> so let's take this out and yep. see how this is. Uh, how do they look, first of all? They look real. Right? <laughs> they look real. They look like they've been done right. Yeah. Give me a small one. Small one. Yeah, yeah I'm a starving actor. Figure. I gotta watch my figure, you know what all I mean? Right. Okay. Of course, you so. guys are the biggest one of the bunch. <laughs> all right, let's cut into this. Let's see how it's. Wow, uh, look at that. Wow. Smells good, right? Is that your Italian sauce? Is this like an Italian yeah, well, twist on the pole? Now, I would put a little Parmesan cheese on top. I mean, you can. Normal, normal, do we have? <laughs> well, what are pierogies? When you put cheese in there, they're yeah, raviolis. Right, that's exactly what <laughs> they're, they're Polish sauce? ravioli. <laughs> wow, this is great. Mmm. Mmm. What do you think? I'll be honest with you, that tomato sauce is phenomenal. The beef tastes good. I've never had it without veal, and I think that's a good surprise. Would you taste the uh, lemon zest? I do. I, you know what it tastes like? I can taste the sauteed onions, and I can taste the garlic, and it broadens the spectrum of the yeah. flavor, for sure. I think it's delicious, and I think you did a great job. I'll okay. be honest with you, as a kid, I hated cabbage. My mom would make them the- With the peppers, the, right? With the peppers, okay. exactly, and I thought it was much better, but I'll tell you right now, I can't even taste the cabbage. It tastes okay. like it's just, it's well, just really, holding it all together. Well, really, is about, you know, maybe 5% of the ingredients. I know, I mean, but It's very thin, you don't even taste it. You know what it. you said about the cabbage. I know. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> it's a number. thin layer of cabbage, you know what I mean? Well, Ignacio, I, first of all, I want to wish you well in your career. Thank you very much. And when you win an Academy Award, don't forget me. I'd love to be in one of your movies. Definitely. Okay. We will make it happen. We will okay. You and Casada will audition. Right. We'll see I'm a little shy, though, but, you know, you have to, I'll force myself. This guy's shy. Cheers. Thank you. I'll be praying for you. Ah, tastes Where'd good. Where'd you get right? this wine? It's good. Yeah, my homemade wine. Is we'll it? We'll talk about that another day. Is that it, it right is. there? Uh -huh. Wow. A taste of heaven in Brooklyn. Don't Monsignor say. Monsignor Gigantiello. Is that anyway, going to be in the liquor stores anytime soon? Soon, soon. Gotcha. I hope. As soon as you're on Broadway. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. I did. And hearing a lot about someone that came to this country as a young boy and really made it in this country. I mean, he's an actor. His family is very assimilated here in Brooklyn. They brought with them their traditions, their roots, their faith, and everything. And I think one thing that I learned speaking to Ignacio today was that it's really important to put your trust in God. Whatever you have in mind to do, whatever you want to do, put your trust in God and never give up. I think a lot of times we lose our patience, but God never loses his patience with us. It may not happen today, it may not happen tomorrow, but when you put your trust in God, It'll happen someday. He'll never let you down. See you next time on Breaking Bread.